Hi, this is Dina for Split Close Stampers. In this tutorial, I will share some ways to use drywall mesh tape in card making. Drywall mesh tape is an adhesive fiberglass mesh that's used to strengthen the seams of drywall in construction. It comes in rolls like this one. What I have here is about two inches wide, but there is a six inch width that would be more practical for cards and full backgrounds. I will be looking for that. For my first sample, I'm going to cut a length of tape to use as a stencil for ink blending. I'm going to just be using a strip of cardstock on my card, but you can see here where that six inch roll would be great for a full background. The adhesive on the back of the tape is enough to keep the tape in place while you're blending on it, but it also will pull away really easily. So I've got three inks here that I'm going to blend across the taped area. I'm going to trim it down so I'm not worrying about being neat on the edges. And when I remove the tape, I'm left with a mesh pattern. There is ink left on the tape as well. So you could use that remaining tape as a design element on your card or you can try reactivating your ink with a little mist of water and then stamp it on another piece of cardstock. I did try that on the background panel of this card. It's a little bit faint, but it did work. You could maybe ink the tape directly for more intense color if you wanted that effect. I like to use drywall tape for masking when I watercolor too. It adds a nice texture to the background and you can leave it alone or you can layer other colors or more of the same color over those areas and get different effects that way. I do have more samples in the Split Coast Gallery for this technique as well. Here I have laid the tape along the outline of my image and I can see the image through the tape, through the open grid so I paint outside the lines of the image and I can use quite a bit of water and still keep control of my wash because the tape keeps the paint contained. You can leave the tape on until the paint dries or you can lift it away and blend some of the areas together if you like. I've had this idea for a while, but I hadn't tried it yet, so I thought this was as good a time as any to experiment. I thought the grid of the tape would make a cute template for a faux cross stitch look. So I've laid the tape over my image. You'll want sharp colored pencils for this. And I just made a little X in each square, staying in the outlines for each color section, and then adding a little darker color in a few areas over the top of the base color for some shading. I think it worked okay. Might have to revisit that idea again. For gel printing, I've wrapped a few strips of drywall tape around a tall tin can. You could use a pipe or sturdy cardboard tube as well. And this is just a simple tool for adding texture to a layer of paint when creating gel prints. I've got an even layer of paint brayered here. and I press and roll my can up the plate, just rolling in one direction and not back and forth. And then I'll take a print to remove that layer of paint. And you can see the imprint of the texture in the paint here that allows the color underneath to show through. One more idea, and that is to use the tape as a stencil for texture paste. I have a tiny canvas started here, and I spread modeling paste through the drywall tape to create some texture at one end, and you can find that finished sample in the Split Coast Gallery. I hope this sparks some ideas for you. If you don't have drywall tape, you'll have to pick some up to play with the next time you're at the hardware store. Thank you so much for watching.